Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about how to land your first DevOps job. So it does not matter where you are, what you are doing currently, but if you are looking to get your first DevOps job, then there's a process that you need to follow. So I just want to talk about that today. So let's start. Uh, so what you need to learn to start your DevOps journey, you should always start with one of the operating system basics. So if you research, if you if you research about OSs that are used for DevOps, you will find Linux is the most preferred uh, operating system across the globe for for DevOps projects. So I would highly recommend that you learn basic Linux administration skills. Uh, you can also use Windows, but the scope of opportunities uh, are more with Linux as compared to Windows. So in in Linux, you don't have to learn everything, but you should know the basic Linux administration or the uh, core principles of Linux, how Linux actually works. And then I've just given a few commands that you will uh, come across when you start uh, learning it. So MKDIR, CP, MV, top, grab, RM, etc. So these are just a few commands out of many that you need to learn as part of your DevOps journey. Okay, and then there are some, some specific processes that you should know, like Linux boot process, shell basics, processes, services, logical volume manage, management, uh, etc. So, so these are the, the very basic things that you need to learn uh, before you actually learn the main DevOps tools. Then apart from operating system, you should also learn the basics of storage, networking and security. Uh, I've spoken about this in my last video also, where I spoke about how to land your first AWS job. So it's the same thing with, with DevOps as well. So you have to learn the basics of storage, networking and security. And I've just given a few terms that you should be uh, uh, familiar with. <clears throat> then uh, you should also learn some scripting, either Bash or Python, depending on your choice. Uh, then in, in DevOps, there are multiple ways how you can actually uh, you know deploy your resources so if you are using one of the uh, cloud hosting platforms then these three are the most widely used so aws azure or gcp aws has the highest market share currently but azure is is, is catching up fast and gcp is also doing pretty well in the market so depending on your choice you can choose one of the cloud platforms. I started my journey with AWS, so I can speak about AWS a lot, how you actually uh, do your DevOps work in AWS. Okay, so if you choose AWS, then once again, I would, I hardly, uh, I would highly recommend that you start with the core services. So these are the list of core services in AWS that you must learn. Then if you're able to do that, then you can choose what type of uh, uh, DevOps specific services you would uh, you would want to learn? So once again, inside AWS also there are multiple ways to deploy your resources. Either you can use the managed uh, AWS services, which is slightly expensive, but of course since AWS is managing these services for you, so uh, you have less administrative overhead. So depending on on your project budget you can choose the different services okay so in in aws the list of managed services starts with ecs which starts for which, which stands for elastic container service then you have eks for elastic kubernetes service then you have code commit code deploy code build code pipeline for ci cd then cloud watch for for monitoring so these are the services that you must learn if you want to use managed AWS services in your DevOps. Then the other way to do it within AWS is you can use EC2 instances to create your virtual machines or VMs, and then you can install some open source applications on top of it to save some costs. So, so this is cost effective, but, but again, uh, you will have more admin work because you have to patch these servers from time to time for security, and other updates so you have to do it on your own in this in this case aws was doing it for you okay behind the scenes okay so you so in in, in this case in uh in in case you're using aws managed services uh you just have to worry about the containers okay but in case of 
you using open source apps in this case you have to manage all the admin work okay related to security patches especially for all your ec2 instances so this is the difference so once again depending on your on your project budget you can choose which uh which method to use for your devops resources then in devops there are multiple uh, different tools that you have to learn for multiple type of work so let's talk about that so i'll start with scm or source code management which means where you will store your code uh, repositories so for that you can use either either gitlab or you can use uh, github okay but in case of aws you can use a code commit i mean if you want to use a managed service you can use code commit which is the most simplest way to store your code in aws then which uh, container runtime or which uh, container technology you will use to create your containers so either you can use a docker or you can use container d so a docker is actually the the one that actually started a devops uh, i mean uh, you see a lot of what you know docker uh, stuff uh, being talked about when we talk about containers but now we have this new tool as well a uh, new new uh, i mean vendor you can say container d but the basics are same okay so docker and container d they both run containers behind them okay so again depending on the type of project that you are in you can use any of these but container d is slightly more uh, uh latest right now and and docker is just getting outdated as we speak but it, it is still used for 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 local development and and local testing if you want to do some you know just uh some local development work so it is still being used there then to manage thousands of containers together or i mean you know uh, so when you run any any container and uh, you are deploying a production grade application you will have a lot of containers together so how to manage all those containers the most widely used tool is kubernetes there is one more tool tool called docker swarm okay but but i have not written it here because it is not used much so i mean uh, 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 i would highly recommend that you learn uh, uh, this tool kubernetes instead of a docker swarm it has i mean uh, most of the projects running uh, around the world which is using container orchestration tools they will use kubernetes so once again you can uh, i mean uh, either use a managed service in aws called eks or elastic kubernetes service or you can create your own kubernetes cluster using another tool called cops a kubernetes operations on ec2 instances so in this case you have to create your own ec2 instances on on top of it you have to use this tool you have to install this tool and then create your cluster on your own okay so uh, this cluster will be completely managed by you it it will not be managed by aws but in this case the the master node of the cluster is being managed by aws so this is the difference then you can uh, also use kube adm which is i mean which is generally used for a, a local testing and development only okay so this is like uh, one more way of creating your own kubernetes cluster and then managing it yourself then for ci cd or continuous integration continuous deployment either you can use jenkins the open source tool or you can use aws managed tool called code pipeline okay depending on your requirement then iaac infrastructure as a code which means if you want to script everything that you want to do in 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 devops so you can use the most widely used tool called terraform or you can use an aws based ia iaac tool called cloud formation which i've given here so uh, once again this terraform is is gaining a, 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 a lot of popularity these days because it is cloud platform independent so if you are using aws azure or or gcp it does not matter you can still use a terraform but for cloud formation it can only be used with aws resources so this is the difference then for configuration management suppose you have to install some application on hundreds of servers at once in that case you can use ansible which is the most widely used configuration management tool today then uh, i mean once you deploy your resources you have created your application uh, and in uh, and you need to monitor everything uh, you know uh, in that case you can i mean you have to use one monitoring tool so in aws either you can use cloudwatch there are some other tools as well but this is the most uh, i mean basic 
tool that you can use to monitor your resources in AWS called CloudWatch, or either you can use your own tool, our uh, own uh, uh, tool that you can install on top of EC2 instances. So the most uh, this popular one is Prometheus and Grafana, but you have other options as well, ELK Stack, which is also very popular. So these are the tools that you have to learn in your DevOps journey. Now, once again, I'll talk about how you should start learning this. Uh, these tools so always start with a free course or so whatever you want to learn here in this section just start with the the free course always and if you if, if you have chosen aws then you can always create your own aws account use the the free tier segment to start your journey and then once you are ready you can choose a paid course but the review should be really good and the rating of the course should be 4.5 star and above okay then after after that you have to uh, try doing some mini projects on, on DevOps. There are, uh, there are ample resources available on Google uh, to, to, to uh, do that. And then you have to prepare some interview question and answers on Google. And then you, you have to see if you can um, get some free uh, internships or uh, some projects to do to uh, you know gain some practical experience. So, so this is about it. So, so, so this is all you have to do to start your DevOps journey. All right. And if you need any help with, with any of it, you can always mail to me and I'm going to give you all the resources free of cost. All right. All right, guys. Uh, thank you for watching my video. I'm going to end this now. All right. See you in the next one. Thank you. Bye.